Welcome to La Vida Rosa. I'm your host Pinky and today we're going to talk about married at first sight. So if you'd like to see more then just stay tuned. But before we begin I would like for everyone to check out my website LaVitaRosaStyle.com where you can find cute accessories like the ones I'm wearing right now. The link is down below. Like, comment, and subscribe and without further ado let's get into this video. So this is after the honeymoon and the couples are getting a hit of reality because now they are you know not in the fantasy world of being on a honeymoon but they're in the real world and they have to move in with one another and so you know what i'm saying it's gonna be hard to put up your representative when you live with somebody 24 7. so they go immediately to their apartment that they share with one another um everybody's house is in the same complex they've been doing that for the past few seasons and um i don't know it's just something a little disingenuous about it but i mean i guess the whole thing is a little bit set up you know getting married to a stranger at first sight so whatever all of your apartments have two bedrooms and two bathrooms and uh yeah when i was looking at the beds the beds look small did the beds look that small last season they, they look like full-size beds and i'm like these two people got to sleep in this bed. Like, um, I, for whatever reason, them beds look extra small to me than I remember them being on other seasons. Maybe not. Y'all let me know down below how y'all felt about their apartments. But they're just like, you know, generic apartments. I think the most interesting part of this episode, though, is going to see where each of the partners are moving from. Like, where they live now. And so, um, I'm going to start with Bennett and Amelia because... They had some of the most interesting living situations, in my opinion. So, like I said, the couples are coming straight off the plane to their apartment. Um, Bennett is looking around as if this is a mansion. <laughs> Compared to that tiny house, to that mini house, I'm sure it is like a mansion. But, um, because it's more than one room. Um, <laughs> and it has a, a bathroom and a kitchen so this is like he's like wow like really looking around like oh we have dishes we have this i'm like the bare the bare necessities but you know what i like the fact that he appreciated the place like i said they have two bathrooms so amelia made one bathroom the toilet bathroom i'm i'm assuming they're gonna do number two in that bathroom and the other one they're gonna just you know like wash their face and bodies in i'm I, i'm guessing so they go to amelia's house which is basically a mansion like when she said it was a huge house I, th I believe she said it herself it was a mansion I wasn't really like thinking about it like that because I've known people to get a huge house and then they just rent out various rooms um but that was a I that was a literal mansion it was huge like from the outside it looked huge on the inside there was like big rooms like it was very spacious she said right now there's four people living there but at any point in time like more than that could be staying there and i'm pretty sure you can because it was very spacious in there um and i don't even think she showed the whole thing she couldn't have the thing was huge from the outside and mind you the house itself is very eclectic it's not like it's not decorated in the traditional sense whatsoever not modern it's just very like artsy um very much so a place I would think that Amelia would be staying. <laughs> um, he was very intimidated by the house because she is more stable than he is. And he said he doesn't have a mature relationship with money. So I feel like that is going to come up as an issue later on in their marriage. Unless Bennett just gives up the reins to her and let her handle let and lets her handle all of that um and it, honestly it seems like amelia wouldn't mind doing some of that then it comes across her yearbook and um it turns out amelia was very popular in high school she was homecoming queen and um he is i think he's a little intimidated once again because he said in high school he would have never ever been able to date the high school homecoming queen but it's like you know high school means nothing like once you leave high school, you don't even see those people ever again. And, you know, the people that were popular in high school, a lot of times they turn out to be, you know, not as successful once you leave high school. So, you know, I hope he doesn't let that intimidate him too much. I mean, you are married to her now. 
So then they go to Bennett's house and Bennett's house is, we already know it's a tiny house. He built it himself. It started off as a set for his play. We, we know a little bit of background on this already. He said he's been staying there for about six months and um, he doesn't have a bathroom or kitchen in the tiny house. It's literally just one tiny room. Like you walk in it, you turn around, that's the whole thing. I guess I wasn't really paying attention when I first saw the, the tiny house, but this time around I realized that his bed is like a bunk bed or loft and it's like, you know, above his desk and then he has other, you know, maybe like a dresser and another table full of things. And um, yeah, it, it, it just, it, there's not much to it. it I don't even think you could call it a uh, studio apartment because there's not, it's literally like a shed almost. Um, it's really, it's even smaller than I thought it was. I knew it was a tiny house, but it's even smaller than I thought. Um, and I already thought it was low key a hovel. So <laughs> they were trying to make it seem like Amelia was having some sort of reservations about him staying there, but it just made Amelia fall even deeper for him. Like Amelia is completely infatuated with Bennett. I feel like he is with her as well, but she... I feel like she is like literally falling head over heels for Benny. And honestly, this made her fall for him even more. That's how I know they're a great match because most people walk in here and be like, what is this? Um, he even said that people in the past have had like some issue with him staying there. So shoot, this just made their connection even deeper. So then Pastor Cal stops by. He stops by with all the couples this episode. And um, the first thing I noticed was Bennett had his dirty feet on the couch. His feet was real dirty. Um, I can't imagine that your apartment is that dirty already, that your feet would pick up all that dirt. I hope you weren't walking around outside without any shoes on, or I hope you just haven't gone a long period of time without washing your feet. But that's just the first thing that popped in my... I could not pay attention to nothing else. That's all I saw. So Pastor Cal was trying to see if they were having deeper conversations, have they discussed kids. And um, they're both on the same page with kids. We already know this. He was morally against having biological children, but Amelia wants biological children, but she's willing to adopt as well. That's great. Um, Amelia wants to be the breadwinner and she wants him to be the stay-at-home dad. And he's completely open to it because, you know, Honestly, Bennett is a starving artist. So having someone come in and basically, you know, take care of everything financially um, and he be the stay at home, you know, what you would think would him be like the homemaker um, and take care of the kids. That's ideal for him. He has very strong family values. So whatever works for them, if if they want to live and if they want to have this non-traditional marriage where she is, you know, out there getting a bacon and she bring it home and he cook it, I don't have one problem with that. That's what y'all want to do. Whenever he said he just, you know, he would, wouldn't mind, you know, living that lifestyle with her. She was just like, oh, he's so perfect. I'm like, Amelia is all the way invested in Bennett. But, but Pastor Cal told them you know y'all are very much so on the same page right now but that's not a permanent thing in marriage there are going to be things you butt heads on and relocating may just be that issue for them and Bennett he just doesn't even want to really talk about it too much he actually I thought he already said he didn't mind moving but then he brought up the fact that he has a theater company he has roots here and um I think he would be a little bit averse to moving I think that could be potentially something that could you know throw a wrench in their you know uh, blissfulness but I also think it's something that they could work through and uh yeah like I told I told y'all a few <clears throat> I told y'all a few reviews ago that whenever Bennett and Amelia argue I feel like it's gonna be kind of big or it's gonna be like dramatic because they're both super passionate people they're both like you know theatrical people and usually those are the ones that have the biggest blow-ups and i'm not saying they're not gonna be able to make it past it but it just seems like they're gonna like um when they do bump heads it's gonna it's gonna be the bump in the heads so let's move on to christina and henry when they went to henry's apartment he stays in a studio it's kind of like a really small place 
um, you know, very sparsely decorated. It was a bachelor pad. Most of the time when we go to see these men's houses, you know, it's very, you know, lacking a woman's touch for, for lack of better words. You know what I'm saying? Um, but Henry had a pillow that a bunch of people have signed. I believe it was like a gift after he had his heart surgery. And they literally glossed past that. Like he was like, yeah, I got that after I had my heart surgery. And I'm like, okay, have y'all had a conversation about the fact that you had heart surgery? Like, has that been a topic of discussion? Like, why did y'all zoom past that so quick? If I was in a relationship with somebody and he said something about heart surgery, I would be very like concerned and want to know like, well, what's going on with your health? So hopefully they have that conversation if they haven't already. He barely had anything in the refrigerator, but some snacks and um, yeah, he likes to play game, video games. That seems to be a theme with some of these men. Um, but yeah, it was very bare in his house and she just was not impressed at all. And it's, she was kind of being judgmental as usual. And, but then when we got to the point of where we're supposed to be seeing where Christina lives, all of her stuff is already in her car and we're not really given much background on why that is. She said something about some of her stuff being left in California, but then Henry brought up the fact that she told him him that she lives in new orleans but she was kind of stumbling on where exactly she lived in new orleans so you know henry found it a little bit you know like well you already told me you lived here and apparently you don't so i'm wondering is this like a mad situation where you're staying on somebody's couch and um this is gonna be your place to live now because you're on the show i don't know but that whole thing was kind of shady and yeah how you gonna be judging his place and you only have a place to stay but then again she is a but then again she is a flight attendant so you know maybe she just doesn't have like a stable place to stay because she's always traveling i don't know well they move in um christina is a big complainer she was just complaining about everything as usual in the house um, they had to move the couch around because she didn't like the feng shui. And it's crazy. Henry will do everything but sit down and have a conversation. He literally sat down and started whistling. I would have been, hold up. Now, one thing you ain't going to do is start whistling. Like, it's bad enough you don't talk, but we, you ain't about to start whistling as if you're bored or something. While Christina does irk me a little bit, I still feel very sorry for her to have to deal with someone like Henry who it's like pulling teeth to get him to talk literally their whole interaction is her sitting there cheesing on the couch and him stumbling through a conversation and then when pastor cal came over pastor cal asked henry what is keeping you from creating chemistry with your wife because he said that she was attractive and he's attracted to her and Similar to what Woody said to him last episode, Pastor Cal said, if you make a move, then I'm sure she'll respond. And he said he feels a friendship vibe with her and that she's really impatient at times and high maintenance. And clearly that's turning him off. Like, <laughs> and at that point, I would have to tell him what turns me off about him. It's not even because because Christina does a lot of lying and saying that their relationship is good, their communication is good, when it's clearly not. And she needs to be honest about that if they want to have any sort of chance at making it. Because Henry, when he was asked, he didn't have a problem telling him, telling her his problems with her. She needs to tell him hers as well. You need to talk a little bit more. You need to engage in conversation a little bit more. It's not even about being laid back and, you know, reserved. It's about with me, you're going to have to at least, we're going to have to have these hard conversations, these deep conversations if you're going to be married. I don't think Pastor Cal really understands uh, or really took seriously what Henry said about Christina because I think his points were valid. But he kind of was like saying like she's a little bit of a diva. She's kind of sassy. And that will complement your quietness. I was basically looking at them exactly the way Pastor Cal was looking at them. But honestly, I feel like they should have brought the experts in much sooner at the beginning of the honeymoon with these two because it's been awkward from day one.
let's move on to Amani and Woody. Pastor Cal came over to their place. And I thought it was funny when he first walked in because they literally look like little kids standing next to Pastor Cal. For whatever reason, whenever I see him standing up, he's always much taller than I picture him to be. Pastor Cal asked Woody, what does he like the most about Imani? He said he's physically attracted to her, but he loves the fact that she's brutally honest with him. And she appreciates the fact that he isn't, you know, scared of her being so honest because a lot of people would shy away from that and, you know, not want to deal. Pastor Cal straight up asked them about consummation and they're like duh we consummated the marriage <laughs> and then he asked about protection and they got quiet and it's like are y'all using protection and uh they're like not every time and um Amani said it's only been one time but y'all it only takes one time y'all don't want to mess around and have a baby and Woody had the nerve to say that he was shooting for a honeymoon baby I would have been ready to knock his teeth out. Are you crazy? Were you trying to get me? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Y'all need to get to know each other first. For, I think for at least a year, y'all should try to get to know each other first. Y'all y'all still have so much to learn. It is way too early to be even thinking about a baby. I could not believe him. Why? 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 So that was completely crazy. But Pastor Cal basically told them they need to be, you know, they need to basically protect themselves. At least get on some birth control, girl. Um, he said they need to talk deeper, though. Like, they need to, you know, y'all have this passion and this, you know, initial connection with each other. But y'all need to talk deeper and not gloss over things because y'all are attracted to one another. Woody said that he doesn't like surprises. He used the example that he she would need his permission to cut her hair and I really feel like he worded it all the way wrong and I feel like that's what really started this misunderstanding between them Imani took his words literally and she was not feeling what he had to say when she was pushing back on him a little bit he was like well you cutting your hair and not telling me is like me quitting my job and not telling you and that's literally that's a false equivalency that does not add up together at all. She was just like, well, you know, that affects our livelihood. Me cutting my hair, that is literally just, you know, me changing my appearance. That's not going to affect us, you know, in the long run. And Woody was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be attracted to you if you cut your hair. And that really offended Almani because it's like, so you're just going to lose all attraction for me if I cut my hair off. At least he's being honest, but it's like that is very shallow and superficial of you to say, Woody. You know, I know a lot of men are just visual creatures. They just, you know, they like what they like and they like to control what their women do with their hair. A lot of times, especially black men, I'm going to be honest. In my opinion, I do think you should check in with your partner before you make major changes to your appearance. Like, for instance, if Woody is about to cut his beard off, I think he should, you know, I think he should talk with her about it. Just like if she's going to cut off all her hair, they should talk with each other about that. Because um, I don't want to, I don't, I, I, if you have a luscious beard, I don't want to come home one day and you just bald headed on the face. I'm, I'm probably going to feel some type of way about that too. Imagine you're married to James Harden and he cuts off his beard. Exactly. But I also agree with Amani, your hair shouldn't determine attraction and you should not want to control her decision if she wants to cut her hair. But I, I don't think Woody meant it like that because he said um, in a past relationship, his ex got pregnant and he did not know about it. And she terminated the pregnancy without his knowledge. And he, that was, you know, I can imagine how he felt about that that was probably very devastating for him probably why he's so pressed to have kids because you know in his mind he could have had a child already and he didn't even have a choice in the matter so in all in all i feel like what woody was trying to say is that he just wants to be included in decision making but he just didn't express that clearly that argument was very constructive and they didn't even really need pastor cal to you know help them get through it and so Arguments are going to happen, and I'm just glad they were able to, you know, talk their way through that one. And, um, but I, I, I agree with Pastor Cal. Y'all going to have to talk a little bit deeper because if they, if y'all had an argument over hair, that means y'all going to have to have some deeper conversations about other things. 
So then they go check out Woody's place. He lives with his grandmother. And, you know, it seems like it's like a roommate style living situation, even though he's staying with his grandmother. And I was thinking, oh, no wonder his grandma was so defensive. She currently lives with him and she probably is like serving him <laughs> on a daily basis, cooking food for him. And it, and it makes me wonder, like, I wonder what all his grandma does do for him because, um... I hope he's not going to expect all of that from Amani. She has to work and do this and that. So, um, Amani don't seem like she's going to baby him. It seems like he's going to have to pick up some of the slack in the household as well. So, I'm interested to see how that's going to work. Even if he didn't say he lived with his grandma, I already knew that that was a grandmother's house. Just by the way it was decorated. I feel like I've seen a million grandmother's houses that looked exactly like that. But, uh, especially in the South. But, um... He said his grandmother is cool with him bringing women over. Woody can do no wrong in his grandmother's eyes. We saw that already, but he literally confirmed it. They're looking through all his shoes and clothes, and I'm looking at this old school floor model TV. And when I say this is not even like old school, like maybe 80s, 90s floor model. This is like, this look even more old school than that. Because um, I remember when I was a little kid, my grandma had a floor model TV, but it was like bigger than that. But that one looked like it was in black and white. That was antique for real. Woody has a whole wall full of hats that he's using for decoration. And um, <laughs> Amani's like, uh, hats are not decor. She said, well, I hope you don't plan on having a hat wall at our place. That doesn't go with my aesthetic. And I'm completely with Amani. Like, um, that's cute for this little room, but not in our house. Later on in the episode, Woody said he's very concerned about appearance. He likes to look good. He likes for his woman to look good and keep things clean. But it's like, I couldn't tell by your room, Woody. I couldn't tell by your room. So they went to Amani's apartment and she had a big closet full of clothes. And um, so I'm wondering how they're going to share a space with each other. I'm thinking because they have two rooms, they have two closets. So I think they'll be all right. But um, she was literally like acting like she was shopping in a mall and just handing him clothes, just handing him clothes. She gonna make sure she got plenty to wear. So let's move on to Olivia and Brett. I saw a different side of Olivia on this episode. And um, yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. She was kind of stubborn and set in her ways. And it's, I, that's, I really think that's going to present a problem in the long run. I couldn't believe I was on Brett's side for a lot of this episode. They went to go visit her house. And um, <laughs> her house was old school, for real. It, it wasn't as, you know, antique as Woody's grandmother's house was. But it was kind of old school. She had a lot of antiques. Um... If I didn't know any better, I would think an older lady lived there, not someone in their 30s. But she was very dead set on wanting to remain living there after this whole thing was said and done, after the process was said and done. Um, even though she's renting and Brett feels like renting is throwing money away and also the house is not close with his job. So I feel like that's going to be a real issue when it comes down to it because she's very stubborn she's seemingly very stubborn and she seemingly really wants to stay there even though it doesn't serve both of him you know um woody owns his own home and he's very proud of it um and i think that's you know that's a great thing for a man of his age to have his own house but when olivia walked in she was not impressed at all and her face was very um, unimpressed. She didn't give him anything. She was very dry when he was like showing her throughout the house. Mind you, there were some junky spots and obviously the house could use a woman's touch. Maybe even do some renovations, you know, to like, you know, maybe tailor it to some things that you like. But for her to not give him anything that was very rude. Like she was, she was kind of being a jerk about it, honestly. Um, I mean, she really didn't even say anything positive whatsoever while walking through that house. I ain't gonna lie. It was a little messy and it, it wasn't really 
decorated so you know maybe she couldn't see the forest for the trees um and you know she she also pointed out the fact that he liked to play video games which is like i said is a thing with these men and she felt the way about it but um yeah she, i don't think she really even gave the house a chance and um i just didn't like the way she handled that because y'all gonna have to compromise at some point he owns this house like I don't know. I just feel like she's not trying to compromise with him at all. So when they meet with Pastor Cal, um, they brought up intimacy and she really wants to wait for a deeper connection before they become intimate. Side note, while they were talking, Brett's cat jumped up on the couch in his lap. That cat scared the mess out of me. That was a huge cat. That was a huge cat. I, I was thrown off. Was I the only one? That cat, like, and then he was kind of, like, reaching up on his shoulder. That cat scared the mess out of me. There's no way in this world I could live in a house with that cat. I'm going to be real with y'all. I couldn't. I already have an aversion to to cats. Um, maybe one day I'll get on here and tell y'all why. I, I had a terrible experience with a cat one time. But that scared the best out of me. They would have to get Garfield on somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, um, so they brought up finances and she said her concern is not their income disparity because he's working towards you know advancing in his career he's you know taking steps to you know move ahead in his career and eventually he's going to make more money i'm assuming but um her main concern is that she wants to travel and go to saints games and do you know extravagant things the thing about it is you know, she wants to do these things. He's not necessarily down for it. He feels like it's a waste of money to spend money on entertainment, things like that. But she wants him to, but she wants to do those things and she wants him to come with her. But she wants him to spend his money. And I feel like that's where they really going to butt heads. On like one more major area where they're really going to butt heads because um, he's like a budgeter. He's a penny pincher. He likes to save, he likes to invest in properties, and she, you know, she likes name brand, she likes to travel, um, luxury, I'm sure she likes to be first class, you know what I'm saying? She likes to, to spend her money that way, but it's like, girl, you can't expect him to spend all his money on that when this is something that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't see how she could just really expect that, unless they put that in the budget, maybe... You know what I'm saying? They put their money together and, you know, budget for a trip or two each year. Possibly they could do that. But I agree with him that he shouldn't have to, like, you know, take money from his retirement in order to, you know, supply your lifestyle that he doesn't even necessarily agree with. They're going to have to find a way to communicate better and compromise in that area if they're going to make it. Personally, I don't think they're going to make it. And Pastor Kyle basically was like, they're letting their emotions get into it and they're not hearing each other their postures changed and i agree they just they just were not she wasn't trying to hear it and neither was he they were both being kind of like a brick wall even though i was more so on brett's side surprisingly and honestly she said she was trying to reduce her debt so how you gonna go on all, all these lavish trips and reduce your debt you know what i'm saying but she's saying she doesn't want to miss out on things in life and she doesn't re want to regret anything so She started crying eventually and Brett got up and got her tissue and uh, she said she just want to be as honest as possible. She doesn't want to hold anything back because she doesn't want any regrets. <sighs> Olivia wore me out this episode. <sighs> so finally, let's talk about Miles and Karen. Miles is doing everything he can to cater to Karen. At, even at his own detriment, he's willing to do whatever it is she needs to feel comfortable with him which is commendable but we'll get to we'll get to that later how it could be a problem later so when they first walked in their apartment they were looking around they looked at the washer and dryer and she was asking well do you are, are you gonna fold clothes and he got really excited. gladly gladly i'll fold clothes for you anytime he loved him some Karen. He loved him some Karen. He, he jumped to do the chores for Karen. Dang. So immediately, Miles claims a place on like the entertainment center for his Xbox. 
and uh she felt a little way about that like some of the rest of the wives felt about the men that had their like little game set up but she was like do you that plays more so into her feeling a way about their four-year age difference but girl she acts like it's a 10-year age difference she said herself she feels like he just got out of high school i'm like miles is a little goofy but i don't think he's necessarily childish i just I don't know like it just doesn't I think she's looking for him to be childish and anything he does she's like see see look that's look what I told you so then they went to go see Miles apartment Miles <laughs> Karen brings up the fact that Miles daddy said that he was messy and I'm mad at Miles daddy like I'm all, I was already feeling a way about his mama but I'm really mad at Miles daddy how you gonna say he's messy and you never stepped foot in his apartment how would you know like, his parents really threw him under the bus for no reason. Why would they do that? But Miles did have a big pile of mess in the corner. It's like, what is that about? I, what? Why is that not in somebody's closet or in somebody's trash, really? So, Miles has a huge wardrobe. And he has shoes for days. And Karen was just acting like he had so much stuff and so many shoes. And like, oh my goodness, you have so much. Like, she made a huge deal about it. But then when we got to her place, she had just as many, if not more, shoes than Miles did. And he made sure to call her out and count all her shoes and let her know, look, you have even more than I do. So when they went to her place, she was just super uncomfortable cold and not welcoming at all like i don't know like miles was trying to make it she miles was trying to make things lighter and less awkward by you know picking up things like look if you don't if you don't talk to me if you don't show if you don't tell me about certain things i'm gonna I'm pick them up and i'm gonna figure it out myself he reached in her drawer and pulled out her lingerie oh my goodness i thought that was hilarious and a little bit awkward because it's like, oh, Miles, you probably ain't going to see that for a long time if you ever do. She was not pleased at all by the fact that he pulled that out. She snatched it from him. But he was just trying to lighten up the mood. Um, but personally, I'm going to be real. I don't like when people just be going through my stuff and touching my stuff either. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't just leave people to their own devices in my house. You know, without like, you know this is this this is that this is you know at least trying to make it a welcoming environment then when he was going through her closet it was like look you got more than i do she was literally shushing him like a child shh 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 you ain't no librarian why was she shushing him like he was a little kid i i would have been over there shushing girl i don't know who you talking to but i'm a grown man don't be shushing me so when they meet up with Pastor Cal, uh, I'm glad Pastor Cal shut down the whole strangership thing. You are not strangers. You are married. And he said he said that in a very stern tone. I was like, thank you, Pastor Cal. Where have you been since the beginning? You should have been here in the beginning shutting that down. Um, but Karen was just talking about how she's still adjusting and she doesn't feel married. Um, she's just very uncomfortable with this entire situation. Obviously, Miles is really attracted to her. She said it, he, she just makes things feel like home. Like, he's just so into her, right? When she gave him the compliment of saying, he's handsome, Miles was cheesing so hard. Oh, my goodness. He, it's like he turned red. Like, I was like, Miles. Like, clearly, that was the first time she said that. He had never heard that because he was blushing like a little boy. I was like, oh, I hope she don't break this man heart. She says PDA feels weird to her because it's been so long. Um, Miles is just a really affectionate person. So, you know, he just doesn't know when, when will be the right time to hug or kiss her on the cheek or do this or do that. But he definitely wants to, you know what I'm saying? She says she doesn't know if that's the real Miles or if he just, you know, this is just his representative. She's like scared to, you know, trust him because of, you know, she's been hurt in the past. We all know that she was with her ex of four years and he had a baby on her. And so honestly, I personally, at this point, when she started breaking down and crying about it, I feel like, you know, Miles has gotten, you know, therapy and counsel for his issues. I think Karen needs to go get help for hers. She needs some counseling for her to break down the way she did. I don't think she's over that. 
and uh, she's letting it influence her now. I just don't feel like she should have done this. I really don't. I don't think she was ready to do something like this. But anyway, we're here now, so we have to deal with it. So Pastor Cal was trying to get Miles to say some things that would make her, you know, feel more at ease. And he said he is all in and he has no intentions of hurting her. He's not going anywhere. And uh, she still doubts him. And Pastor Cal was like, look, we chose him for a purpose. We didn't just choose anybody off the street. We chose someone who would have like a big heart because I'm sure they knew about her situation with her ex. And so they wanted to give her someone that would never do something like that to her. And um, then Pastor Cal asked, you know, Miles, what do you need from this relationship? How do you feel? You know, you're catering to her, but how can she return the favor for you? And, um, you know, basically he was like, you know, as long as she's comfortable, I'm happy. If she's happy. I'm happy. Pastor Cal was like, they have a saying, happy wife, happy life, but really it's happy spouse, happy house. Like both people need to be happy. It can't just be her being happy. Um, and you can't put your feelings on the back burner. And Pastor Cal, anyway, he was talking about, you know, yeah, I'm just going to cater to her and let her, you know, as long as she happy. And Pastor Cal was like, what if y'all never be intimate? He was like, well, I ain't okay with that. Miles, Miles put his foot down on that one every single time. So he said he's not going to pressure her. He doesn't want to push her to do anything she doesn't want to do. But that's definitely something that he wants to be in their relationship at some point. And I don't blame him. But Pastor Cal and even Karen said that, you know, he should call her out um, when he needs something from her. Or when she's doing something that he doesn't like. Because, you know what I'm saying, she shouldn't be the only one that's you know, cater to in the relationship and she wants to, she says she wants to make sure that, uh, she can handle, you know, giving him the things that he needs in this relationship. And at the end of all that, I'm just like, know your worth, King. Know your worth, King. You deserve to be catered to as well. You deserve to get the world just like she does. You know what I'm saying? I never thought I would have to say this to a man because usually they know they worth. And they be trying to attack on a bunch of things they don't deserve on top of that. You know what I'm saying? But um, with Miles, it doesn't seem like he, you know, you deserve better than someone giving you less than the bare minimum. You do. So hopefully Miles realizes that and puts his foot down. And um, honestly, even though the relationship is rocky right now and I, and I just don't see much of a connection there at all. I don't know why, but deep down inside, I just feel like Miles is going to win her over at some point. I think somebody's going to knock some sense into her, like her mom or Pastor Cal. Somebody's going to talk some sense into her, and she's going to realize she has a good man. And Miles is basically going to kill her with kindness. She's going to have no choice but to fall for him. That's what I feel. But anyway, let me know what you think down below. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? I would love to hear your opinion. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Peace.